Welcome back to the Skyler Hill. Today I'm going to try and fix this torpedo heater. Not sure what's wrong with it. I, I got it for free, was told it's kind of finicky. Let's see if we can't figure out what's going on with it. Hopefully, if nothing else, we can get it running and use it over the course of this winter. Uh, the plan is to have some form of permanent heat in the shop, but for now there's absolutely nothing and it's pretty darn cold down there. This thing is right about 18 years old. Should put out some good heat, 115,000 BTU. That should heat up that 30 by 36 shop, no problem. Let's pull this top shroud off here and uh, see what's going on inside there. I was told the fan has been acting up. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with it. Okay, well it's not spinning at all there. Yeah, the motor's just not starting. Look at that. You guys see that? It started and ran the opposite direction that time. If you notice, it sounded really different too. We'll see if I can get it to run backwards again. The reason that sounds so goofy is the front half of this electric motor is the fan which blows the air through the burn chamber. The back half is an air pump which blows through this little tiny tube here down and around into the injector which is what atomizes the fuel as it goes through the burn chamber. So when it's spinning backwards this pump obviously is also going backwards because it's directly coupled to the motor. This stupid motor is our problem. So I cut the zip ties that were holding it down and started lifting the motor up. Look at this. I'm going to guess that yellow guy there that has exploded is probably the star capacitor. Yeah, that would do it. I'm sure this is not supposed to be serviceable, but I bet we can get around that. Well, I just don't get how, where, where is the rest of it? I don't know how, what, how did this thing come out of there? Like, I don't get it. It must have just got hot and unwound itself and started coming out. There just might be enough numbers on here we can figure out what we need. I'll go hop on Amazon and see if I can find another one. Well, good news. I found what appears to be the exact capacitor. Bad news. It's $45. Other bad news. It's not going to be here until the 29th. And guess what? I want this thing for tomorrow, which is Christmas morning. So, I'm going to do the right thing and steal a capacitor off of this motor here. Yeah, that giant hump on top. That's the start capacitor. A little bit bigger than the one that was on this thing. Before we go that route, I think there's another one here somewhere. I don't know, I'm gonna go digging. Well, I came back to the start capacitor to inspect it, to see what it was rated for, and you can see somebody got to it. Did you do this? Did you chew on this? Yeah, you know you did. I struck out up here. I know I had an old refrigerant pump off of a window unit, freezer. I don't know what it was off of. I was gonna make a vacuum pump out of it, but Apparently I threw it out. Spot number two. We've got this ceiling fan here. Well, I guess it's a wall mount fan. I don't know, that's a crazy motor. It's like currently wired for 240, but also can be three phase. I don't want to mess with that. Here's option three. That capacitor inside that big hump there. Then I've actually got another motor inside this milk crate. I don't want to deal with either one of those. I'm gonna yank the one right here off my furnace fan that I just use in the summer to circulate air. Just yank the wires off. Now the reason I'm taking this one over any of the others is because it's by far the easiest one to get off. All I want to do is see if that thing is actually going to work. What is going on back here? What, what angle is this screw at? Just, okay, it's loose. There we go. Now, not only is this not a step, but it's definitely not a step when you're wearing Crocs and you're trying to film what you're doing. Now I'm going to get the right one or at least one that's a lot closer to the same as what was in this unit originally. For now this is just so I can have heat out in the shop tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve right now and I just want to get out in the shop in the morning for a couple hours get some stuff done before all the festivities. Let's dig around in the miscellaneous wire mess. See if I can't find something that's already got the right terminals on it. Here we go. Here's one. See? That's exactly what I need. Well, I got lucky and found one wire. I had to just grab another remnant and crimp an end on there quick. Not like it matters, this is all temp anyway. Let's see, where's... Could I stick more stuff in here? 
I need wire nuts. Now I'm not doing anything fancy here at all. I'm just gonna take this neat little section I got and just wire nut it together. And there's one side. Where is the oh there's the other one. Now I've got two little female spade terminals to go over this temporary capacitor I'm gonna put in there. Just gotta remember to stick this hose back on here. And that will blow the fresh air down up through here into the injector, which blows through the diesel fuel, spraying a nice little mist into the burn chamber. This motor here is labeled rotation with an arrow, so we know the fan should spin this way. Yeah, I think that's installed enough. Let's see what it does. Look at that. Bring it back here for a better view. It just instantly takes off in the right direction. I'll show you this too while we got it apart. If you look down inside here, right in there you'll see something glowing bright red. Oh lied, it's in that hole. But that's your igniter. Now, if this thing had diesel in it, which it doesn't, as indicated by the gauge, it would be spraying it through the nozzle, igniting it. You get the picture. I'm going to button this up, we'll put some diesel in it, and we'll try it out. As you can see, I've expertly created a mount here for this capacitor with the zip tie back on the ground, put about five gallons of diesel on it, let's see what it does. Well that sounds good. 